For a long time, the exchange rate between the U.S. dollar and the Chinese yuan, renminbi, remained below 7. It existed like a myth in the minds of the Chinese public and the outside world. But such a myth has recently been shattered. On September 15, 2022, the U.S. dollar exchange rate against the RMB broke through the psychological barrier of 7, and the depreciation accelerated after that. In less than two weeks, on September 28th, both the offshore and onshore U.S. dollar against the renminbi fell below the mark of 7.2, setting a record low since 2020 and 2008, respectively. In reality, since late April 2022, the exchange rate of the U.S. dollar against the RMB has been declining rapidly. Over the past year, the RMB has fallen by about 12%. The sharp depreciation of the RMB has led foreign investors to sell off A shares. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, is annoyed with this. China's state news agency, Xinhua, said that the aggressive interest rate hike by the American Federal Reserve is a strategy chosen by the U.S. after repeatedly weighing its calculations, with the intention of transferring the crisis outward through the hegemony of the American dollar, which essentially harms others and harms the world. It is also said that the world has been suffering from the U.S. for a long time. Indeed, with the recent depreciation of non-U.S. currencies across the board, the exchange rates of the euro, the pound, and the Japanese yen have all hit multi-year lows. However, what the world sees is that the RMB is struggling just like all other currencies, even though the CCP has a stronger grip on the market than most governments in the world. Six years ago, in 2016, the RMB was under pressure to depreciate with the USD RMB mid-price reaching 6.96 at one point. The Chinese central bank used large amounts of foreign exchange to halt the exchange rate before the 7 mark. On August 5, 2019, the US dollar to RMB exchange rate broke the 7 mark, hitting a new 11-year low due to the impact of the then US-China trade war. The RMB then appreciated afterward, reaching 6.3 at one point. Therefore, for a long time, the market has formed an expectation that the RMB will stay at 7 and that China's central bank will use policy measures to keep the exchange rate stable below this figure. Once this threshold is breached, investors' expectations of future RMB depreciation may be heightened, causing foreign capital to withdraw at an accelerated rate, making it much more difficult to stabilize the exchange rate. On September 5th and 26, China's central bank introduced two measures to stop the downward momentum of the RMB exchange rate. Both of these measures were aimed at curbing foreign exchange appreciation, raising the cost of shorting the RMB, and easing the pressure of RMB depreciation. However, it is now apparent that these two measures proved unsuccessful. After the RMB plunged on September 28th, four people familiar with the matter told Reuters on September 29th that China's central bank had asked major state-owned banks to prepare to sell dollars in the offshore market in a bid to step up efforts to curb the devaluation of the RMB. This strong message to defend the RMB from further decline has led to a slight recovery in the RMB exchange rate. Unfortunately, by September 30th, the RMB exchange rate continued to drop. So what led to the plunge in the RMB exchange rate? The first, of course, was the Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rate hike policy. The Fed has raised interest rates five times in 2022, totaling 300 basis points this year, in an effort to curb the worst inflation in over 40 years. After Fed officials released another signal to raise interest rates on September 27th, it immediately triggered market fears of a global recession, and the dollar index had surpassed 114 by September 28th, again hitting a new high in more than 20 years. With the renewed strength of the dollar index, the RMB exchange rate depreciated sharply. On top of that, there were multiple factors that have caused the RMB exchange rate to fall. China's central bank has had to cut interest rates several times in order to stimulate the economy. This has left an inverted differential in treasury rates between China and the U.S. Currently, there is an inversion of 100 basis points. This is due to the economic downturn in China and the further impact of the zero-COVID policy on the economy. At the same time, the external environment for the Beijing government has worsened, with the CCP forming an alliance with Russia in the context of its confrontation with international powers.
It has also triggered war fears in the Taiwan Strait, etc., which in turn has recently led to a clear trend of foreign investment pulling out of the Chinese market. What does the fall in the RMB exchange rate mean for China? Here is what the official Chinese experts think. It is tenable to say that either rises or falls in foreign exchange rates are of advantages and disadvantages. It is wrong to say that any appreciation is good and any devaluation is bad. Specifically, the recent adjustment of the Chinese yuan exchange rate is obviously beneficial to market entities with foreign exchange incomes and foreign exchange assets, but may bring certain losses to those that have external payment needs or external liabilities. Is this really the case? Here we have borrowed the views of a China expert and provide you with some insights. First of all, this hurts the CCP's image. If calculated in American dollars, China's GDP and GDP per capita would be negative. Assuming China's economy grows by 3%, it becomes a 9% negative growth based on US dollars. It is a difficult task for the CCP propaganda department to glorify a negative figure, both domestically and internationally. In particular, for a long time, the propaganda department has been using so-called experts to hype that China's economy has surpassed that of the US. The sharp decline in GDP figures makes it difficult for the propaganda department to justify it in a favorable light. The second real and very serious problem is that it affects investors' expectations. Investors will certainly consider the exchange rate risk when planning to invest significantly in mainland China. If expectations of a falling RMB take shape, investors will be more cautious. For example, if one invested their dollars in China a year ago and received a 5% capital gain when converting to RMB, only to now convert back to USD and receive 10% less, the loss outweighs the gain on this investment. Since 2018, when the trade war started between the US, China's Premier Li Keqiang has been talking about six stabilities and six guarantees. Among them are stabilizing expectations and protect market players. Today, the trade war is still ongoing and the outbreak is resurging in China. That's why Premier Li has been emphasizing the policy till today, because the expectation of the direction of the RMB greatly affects investors' decisions. The Wall Street Journal reported on September 15, 2022, that foreign investors reduced their holdings of Chinese bonds by another 5.1 billion US dollars in August, and that a total of more than 85 billion of Chinese bonds have been cut since February, equivalent to about 15% of holdings at the end of January 2022. Third, a fallen RMB currency will bring inflation. China's economy is heavily dependent on foreign trade. It's the world's largest importer of oil, food, semiconductors, etc. A falling RMB equates to higher costs for domestic products, causing prices to rise. Fourth, a falling RMB means a big increase in the burden of expenditure. China now has 2.7 trillion US dollars in foreign debt, with most of the debt maturing this year and next. The fall in the RMB equates to a significant increase in the cost of debt repayment for Chinese companies and financial institutions. When it comes to foreign debt, Chinese government agencies and departments account for most of the debt. In particular, foreign debt issued by government departments such as provincial or municipal governments will be under enormous pressure. We featured in an episode not long ago that from January to August 2022, local governments in China were all in deficit, except for Shanghai. Revenues are already declining, and repaying the dollar debt will require 12% more RMB to be used than before, which makes things worse. Imagine if the RMB continues to fall. If the pressure reaches a certain level, will the economy be crashing down? Of course, Communist Party economists have assured the public that this isn't the case. China's trade structuring goods has been constantly optimized in parallel with the narrowing service trade deficit and further upgrading and development of service trade. China has maintained a basic surplus in the international balance of payments such as the current account, which provided solid support for the stable operation of China's foreign exchange market and the stability of the RMB exchange rate. 
The reality is, since this summer, the CCP's official media has frequently published various articles criticizing the dollar hegemony and claiming that the U.S. is using the dollar hegemony to deprive other countries of their wealth. Chinese Foreign Minister also denounced the U.S. hegemony in New York in late September. Objectively speaking, for various historical and practical reasons, the American dollar is the dominant power in the global financial system. After World War II, the U.S. became the world's largest economy. It has the greatest military power and political influence and plays a role in maintaining order around the world. But it's also the result of a liberal economic system that operates through market behavior with a relatively fair set of rules and systems. The dollar index has continued to strengthen in recent times. In addition to the Fed's interest rate hike, a war factor is involved. With the Russian war taking hold and even threatening to use nuclear weapons, global capital is running to the U.S. for refuge, which is another factor for the dollar soaring. The reason for using the dollar in oil transactions in the Middle East, in addition to the U.S. once buying the most oil, is that the U.S. is the only force that can maintain peace in the Middle East. That is to say, behind the dominance of the American dollar, there is also the U.S. military, the only one that can quickly project a powerful army globally. The Fed's interest rate hike will have an impact on the entire world economy. The Federal Reserve, of course, only considers the American interest, which is a fact that other countries cannot deny. Now the CCP is facing a big problem as the economy of mainland China and the major Western economies are having opposing demands. The U.S. and other Western countries, in order to curb inflation, need to raise interest rates. China, on the other hand, has to choose to cut interest rates. The rapid economic depression caused by the extreme zero-COVID policy and the crisis brought about by the cooling of the real estate sector, especially the systemic financial and political risks now festering in the real estate sector, will drive Beijing to opt for more lenient monetary policy. The most obvious manifestation of China's real estate crisis is the emergence of massive numbers of rotten tail buildings or unfinished buildings. Homeowners collectively refuse to pay their mortgages, and Beijing has yet to find a solution to this problem. This problem, first of all, will affect property transactions and the government's credibility, right? And it could exacerbate the developer's debt problems. For example, if the developer cannot resume construction, it means that the developer is still in a very poor financial situation. If I am a home buyer, I will think, for example, if a developer has an unfinished rotten building in a certain place that has not been finished, I will not consider buying the apartment it is selling elsewhere, because that property may also have problems. This will further aggravate the debt problem of the real estate companies. Therefore, this issue, rotting houses, will have some bad effects for the economic level, the corporate level, the social level, and impact the expectations of home buyers. Meanwhile, consumption in China is very weak. Because consumer demand is weak and China's inflation rate is staying relatively low, China doesn't need to tighten its monetary policy significantly. Instead, it needs to cut interest rates to stimulate the economy and address the current high unemployment rate. Moreover, consumption and investment are weak among the so-called three driving forces of economic growth in China. Only exports are doing well. They are, however, facing fierce competition. The devaluation of the RMB may make Chinese products cheaper in overseas markets, which could help China's exports. Therefore, in mid-August this year, the Chinese central bank went against the international trend and cut the interest rate. It surprised the outside world at the time. At the same time, China's state council announced a series of growth-enhancing policies, trying to boost the economic recovery by driving down the cost of capital.
It's expected that we can defer the tax payment of nearly 30 million yuan, and we have obtained nearly 80 million yuan in tax rebates, which relieves our financial pressure and ensures the normal operation of the company. However, an interest rate cut would in turn lead to a fall in the RMB, a change in investor expectations, and a depreciation of assets. If the Chinese government follows the U.S. in raising interest rates, it would be adding to the sluggish economic situation and things would get worse. Therefore, Beijing can be said to be stuck in a dilemma between managing the value of the RMB and stimulating economic growth. At present, Beijing has no good way to deal with the Federal Reserve except to criticize the dollar hegemony in a series of articles in the government media. If there is any special way to deal with it, it's that, compared to Western countries, Red China can resort to illegal and irregular administrative measures to manipulate the demands for the RMB and the dollar. For example, banning or delaying the exit of foreign currency for capital projects or restricting the use of foreign currency by Chinese individuals, preventing Chinese people from traveling abroad, etc., it is foreseeable that in the near future, fewer and fewer Chinese will be able to leave the country. So, will the CCP sell trillions of dollars, as it did in 2014 and 2015, to stop the devaluation of its own currency? It's unlikely. This is because, in 2014, China's foreign exchange reserves were as high as 4 trillion US dollars, with high net reserves. But now, the total foreign exchange reserves are officially claimed to be 3 trillion, with net reserves of less than 400 billion US dollars. This is the official figure. We have analyzed in previous episodes that China's foreign exchange reserves are likely to be close to depletion. As we can see, the CCP is prepared to let the RMB slide slowly all the way down and won't be using heavy-handed and rigid measures to control the RMB exchange rate. This is because the CCP has another main objective, which is to internationalize the RMB, i.e. to gain widespread recognition and acceptance in the international market with the ultimate goal of becoming an international settlement currency, input currency, and reserve currency. If there is a strong feeling in the outside world that the RMB is not freely convertible, then the idea of internationalization of the RMB won't work. However, the series of economic operations currently being carried out by the CCP seems to be going against the grain, showing an overtone of an increasingly planned economy. So in the long run, the RMB is definitely not looking optimistic, and the accelerated internationalization will probably end up being an empty wish. It can be said that it isn't the worst time for the RMB yet, because the CCP believes that the renminbi is still appreciating against other mainstream non-US currencies. The current RMB has not yet experienced a full-scale devaluation. In other words, the CCP believes there is still room for the RMB to continue depreciating. Such thinking on the part of China's central bank is also evident from its official media reports. On September 6, the 21st Century Business Herald, a Chinese business news daily newspaper, headlined a report that read, No need to pay too much attention to the 7 mark. Three major indexes of RMB exchange rates are running solidly and the RMB is still appreciating against non-US currencies. So the purpose of the Chinese central bank's recent exchange rate policy and future efforts is not to completely reverse the decline in the RMB exchange rate, but only to slow its depreciation rate and avoid panic selling. As for whether the CCP can achieve this goal, it remains to be seen.